Enrage. What's that? Well, it's a debuff. What does it do? It forces whatever character is enraged to perform their basic attack on a random enemy at their turn, instead of being able to choose who they target or use any special moves they may have off cooldown. Wow, that sounds really annoying. That sounds like it could really disrupt my team plan. I mean, you know, what, what if I what if I have a heal I need to use? Or what if I have a taunt that I need to bring up and my taunter just randomly attacks an enemy and then- Well, not so fast. There are times where it might be beneficial to be in- What? Oh boy. Alright lads, hope you're doing well, we're doing something a bit different today. This is the first bit of content that I'm doing for DC Legends, so sit back and enjoy. Today's episode is about Enrage. Enrage is a delightful little debuff that's been in the game since launch, and I personally feel that it is woefully underused in today's meta. Now I've already explained what it is and what it does, but you might still have questions. Who can use it? How do they use it? When would I want to use it? Where would I want to use it? And all of those questions are questions that I'm going to try to answer today. Now, before I can tell you whether you should be using Enrage today, it's important to understand how it's been used in the past, and for that I need to run you through a little history lesson on the debuff. Don't worry, it won't take long. Now at the start of the game there were four characters who could apply in Rage. Swamp Thing had it on one move, but he was a slow character, it had a slow cooldown, it just wasn't very good. Next was Sinestro, who could, on top of putting in Rage on someone, also delay their turn by lowering their turn meter. This was decent. Then you had Harley, who could taunt, apply evasion to enemies, and enrage them. This meant that on their turns, instead of being able to do any number of useful things, they would run face first into her, and she would dodge. Not bad. Now the last character we have here is Solomon Grundy. Now, the biggest thing with Solomon Grundy is that he didn't apply enrage to enemies. He didn't apply it to one enemy, but for longer and lower their turn meter. No, he applied it to himself and his basic attack dealt bonus damage if he was enraged. He had an AoE, he had taunt, he had other stuff in his kit he could revive and come back with enrage, but the biggest thing that you need to understand about this guy is that even at the launch of the game, he proved that enrage wasn't just going to be a simple debuff. No, some characters were going to benefit from it. As the game progressed, you had Ares come out, who could give turn meter, enrage, and strength up to allies. This obviously paired well with Grundy. Then, obviously, you had well, the biggest change to an enrage throughout the game's lifespan, and that was the release of Atrocitus, the first Red Lantern. Atrocitus, he could enrage his allies, all of them, at the start of the match, and that enraged allies gained 50% damage and 50% speed. This was huge. The moment someone on his team took a turn, the entire rest of his team were going to fly in at full force, faster than your enemy team could even get a turn, and one-shot anything that breathed. This was huge, and this was especially huge because of the recent addition of everyone loves to hate her, Wonder Girl. Now Wonder Girl, if you are unaware, if you're new to the game or you've never played the game before and you're just watching this video for the hell of it, well, Wonder Girl is, to this day, still most likely the best character in the game. And while you don't need to know all the other crazy stuff she does at the moment, all you need to understand is that she was already really good, but one of the odd things that was in her kit is that she also received bonus damage on her basic, just like Grundy, if she was enraged. Now this seemed really out of place for her because enrage wasn't the thing. If, if everyone was using Sinestro and Harley it would have made sense, but no. It was just entirely random in her kit and the game is still suffering from it today because essentially, because of how strong she is, because of how often you see her, People don't want to use Enrage because they're scared they'll go up against a Wonder Girl, Enrage Wonder Girl, and then Wonder Girl will one-shot someone on their team. And this sucks, okay? This absolutely sucks. Because what otherwise could be a really, really engaging and fun strategy to use is often kind of bad-mouthed by players because they go, oh, but what about Wonder Girl? What if you Enrage Wonder Girl? Well, guess what, buddy? Wonder Girl isn't on every team. And even if you do see her, well, you can't take her out before she gets a turn, you can usually take her out before she causes too much damage. But I cannot stress this enough, Enrage is still a niche. It is not the meta. I am not recommending that you pursue this instead of the meta if you prioritize results. I am not recommending that any new players double down on enraged teams, of all things. God no. Do not do that. If you are listening to this, if you are a new player, if your question was, should I be using enrage? The answer is no. However, 
if you are a mid-game to end-game player, you're looking for a very fun team that can be useful in some matchups, then Enrage is definitely worth considering, because my god are they fun. And that brings us to our Enrage All-Stars. They are John Constantine, Hellblazer, Sinestro, Yellow Lantern, Joker, the Clown Prince of Crime, and last but not least, Mr. Freeze, Heart of Ice. Now the first thing that makes this team such a deadly combination is that they all deal special damage. Constantine, Joker, and, sure enough, Sinestro all apply intelligence down to the enemies. What does that matter? Well, for those who don't know, regular damage is affected by your strength stat. How much you take is affected by your agility stat. That's kind of your defense against physical damage. However, special damage, how much you deal and how much you take, is influenced by your intelligence stat. Now, most characters in this game deal regular damage, and most characters have a low intelligence stat, and they are not prepared for special damage. Now, what's really important about this is that because of the int downs that you're putting on the enemies, not only are you making it so that any special damage characters on the enemy team are just going to be dealing no damage, you're also making it so that they're all much more susceptible to your special brand of damage. This means that your entire team is going to have massively boosted damage because of all of the intelligence down flying around on the enemy team. The next is speed down. Constantine applies speed down, Sinestro removes turn meter, Mr. Freeze does both. Now, this entire team can essentially control the enemy team to such a degree that they rarely ever get turns. And when they do get turns, they're enraged, they use their basic attack, they run straight into Mr. Freeze, because he's taunting, and that's when the party starts. Now, just talking about this team, I'm sure you can see the synergy here. But I'm not just going to talk to you about this team. Oh no, I'm going to show you them. So let's hop in to a red alert. So here we are in red alerts. Now, looking at this first team, uh, Flash is fast, and this is a problem, because this team is slow, right? They need to get the first turns to get the ball rolling, and after that, turn meter will carry over between fights in red alerts. The reason why I'm testing this team in red alerts is because in PvP, the meta is very speed heavy at the moment. It's usually Lex lead and whoever has the fastest character, so, you know, a Wally or a Brainiac or whatever, and you just, you know, you plug them in and you try and get the, the Lex steam train rolling as fast as possible. And I want to kind of get past that tonight, um, because I have tried some PvP matches with this team before, and while they can do very well in certain matchups, I will roll the footage where they do well. Uh, it's kind of 50-50, because if someone just gets, you know, one-shot crit at the start of the match because they're too slow, then the team isn't going to do well. Or rather, they might still win, but they won't three-star it, which isn't good for end-game players, and we've already clarified that this team isn't good for early game players, which kind of leaves you at mid-game where it's, you know, if you've got enough resources to throw around at these characters, but you're not so rich that you're struggling and only getting three to six matches in Wraith, then maybe, you know, you can you can have some fun matches where you'll only one star a fight, but that's that's not compelling, right? I need to make the case for this team. So it's very hard to make the case for them in PvP simply because of the fact that you you need to get the first turn in PvP at the moment. And so if you want to use three of these guys and then sub in a Wally or a Brainiac or a Castaway, depending on the affinity of the opponents who you want to sub out, that can totally work. Uh, but for now, I'm interested in using the four characters all together as a team to see how they work and see if they work in practice as good as they work on paper. I want to see the synergy in action and then we'll hop into some PvP. Trying to find a match without a turn zero taunter and where the characters are all very slow. I think this might be it. Now, Cape Crusader Batman is pretty fast. But you shouldn't be able to one shot anyone turn one anyway. Just barely. Good lord. I can't call assist with my basic, so I can either just try to enrage someone, or put a taunt on someone, but he's probably going to get rid of it, so I'll try to enrage. That paid off perfectly. <laughs> Love when a motorbike drives away, it's hard. So, 
even though Saint Walker is passively immune to Enrage, I'm going to do this anyway for the turn meter down and the int downs. Now I can chuck out this AoE. And taunt. Just in time for Zatanna to attack Freeze. He's going to throw a grenade back at her. And because they had turn meter, he's going to do that. And then that was the assist being called. Get some random damage going off. <sighs> Very lucky there. Let's go AoE. And this, this time we're going to put the taunt on Sinestro because he's very tanky at the moment. And slow down Saint Walker. Take out Batman. There we go. And now, that was a difficult fight, but we did win. And if that were a PvP match, we would have three starred it. But what I want to see here is, now that they've got turn meter rolling, because of how important turn meter is in this game, does this team just... Hell, here's the exact same enemy team. Let's see how much easier this is. Despite the fact that I'm starting on lower health, let's see how much easier this is with turn meter. Slide them down. Not much damage coming from these guys at this point. And we're done. And that was significantly easier because of the fact that I was starting with turn meter. This team would be very easy, so I want to see if I can find one that's maybe a little bit harder. Okay, this team has some... Some heavy hitters going on here. One for each affinity. Enraged immediately, so turn meter for Sinestro. Then, sure, enraging it down on Black Adam. More turn meter immense for Sinestro, and in ups for everyone. So, at this stage, I'll go for my AoE. And again, I'll just throw another AoE, slow them all down, kills those two. Dead and probably dead. Yep, dead. So you can see this team is absolutely breezing through the red alert now that they've had the ability to um, kind of get the, the ball rolling in terms of their speed. Now I don't want to fight this team again because I already proved the point there. So Katana is very tanky and can hit very hard. Uh, so she could be quite difficult for freeze, especially combined with Black Adam. So let's see how the team does here. So immediately, an Enrage, that gives turn meter amends to Sinestro. And he also gives him an ups to Joker, which is nice. So we're going to go buffed up after Beast Boy. That was some big damage there. Um, a taunt here. Increase my health pool. Now Constantine just went out immediately from that AoE. So... And there goes Freeze as well. Now this team's basically done at this point, right, for the purposes of this testing. But let's see if they can win this anyway, what's, what's left of them. Get rid of Beast Boy. He's got so many in-downs that he's going to do nothing, he's going to retaliate. He's got in-downs as well, retaliation, lovely. Enrage her, that's going to give him turn meter. He's going to go after him, but he won't care, he's going to enrage her again. <laughs> and she's done. So, watching that back, I think it's pretty interesting. I think the main reason I lost was because of that unlucky AoE against Constantine. Beast Boy managed to survive, but he was just low enough that he got damage immunity, and then he did his AoE and he got a crit. It was pretty unfortunate, but, you know, what can you do? I have beaten Red Alerts with that team before. It's definitely possible, it happens most of the time. Uh, but that was still, I think, an interesting showcase of the synergy. Especially at the end there, where Joker did two retaliations and killed two people in a row. 
th th there's so much synergy in this team and sometimes it can work beautifully and then sometimes they can just be shot down before they can have a chance so uh, I'm gonna make my final verdict in a minute but before I do that I'm gonna show you some PvP matches next enjoy the only problem here is Batwoman if she starts with invisibility and turn one she goes for a nuke on Joker and it crits and he dies that's gonna suck but I am at least gonna slow them down thanks to Constantine's lead so I'm willing to risk it and if she goes after one of the other two we'll be absolutely fine There's a 1 in 3 chance this could go horribly, basically. And we're fine. Am I going to win this? Ooh. <laughs> <coughs> <sighs> I don't know how to feel about that. So, he'd slow me down, he'd buff, he'd do another AoE. She... Um, let's try this. I might get demolished, but let's try this. In theory, Constantine starting invisible should mean I'm fine. But if they do enough AoE attacks that he goes below 25% health and Huntress will pick him off. So this could be this could be very bad. This could be very, very bad. Ow, ow. Okay. We're just about good. Just about. So we got. He, since um he was enraged, he did his basic. She got enraged, and uh, that means that he got some int ups, and he tried to give them to the whole team. It's only a ninety percent chance. Uh, you can see here. Oh no, it's a sixty percent chance because I don't have mine upgraded. Shh, tell no one. So yeah, sadly couldn't get them on Joker, but that's all right. I think because of the fact that she's taunting, I'm just going to go for this, see what happens. Big damage on everyone. Would have would have killed uh, Green Arrow there. Ah. Not ideal. Here we go, we got another Enrage on her. Let's try and slow them down. Nice. And... Another Enrage, see? You look look at Sinestro, he's just getting all of these men's, all of this turn meter. He's handing it out to the whole team, and I never manually enraged anyone with Sinestro the entire match. It was entirely from Constantine there. It is, however, a shame that Joker went down. Reverse Flash would mean that they're all just going off, like, immediately. And Joker would probably die. And they'd be getting turn meter from Superboy because of Constantine's invisibility. No, 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 no. That's a bad matchup. Now, Aquaman is an interesting one. Aquaman's interesting because he has a chance... 50%, is it? To also give debuff immunity. And if he does that, that's not going to be good. And once again, there's a reverse flash. So, Reverse Flash is probably going to do his 3 on Joker at the start of the match. Knowing my luck, it's probably going to crit, 
and then after that, I'm just I'm just gonna to be either dead or definitely not three star it. So, yep, there we go. And he gave them debuff immunity. Okay, let's let's enrage Aquaman. Uh, nice, got rid of those. Because he enraged himself, he got a taunt called on him. Taunt uh, an assist. So now I can taunt. And then purge stuff from him, so he's not as tanky. Basically over at this point, I just need to slow them down. And that's Mr. Freeze's passive at work, calling those assists. So it's kind of uh, it's kind of like someone on the team is retaliating on behalf of whoever gets hit by the enraged enemy. But they don't actually have to get hit for it to happen, it's just at the end of an enraged enemy's turn. Which also means if a character gives them self enrage, like Grundy did on that taunt, uh, it's going to trigger even though they weren't enraged and didn't attack during that turn. Batwoman, will she gain anything on her turn? No, she probably won't. And I don't think Siren's faster than Constantine. Well, I could be wrong. But even if I'm not, she'll probably do her AoE and not gain anything. Let's giggity give it a go. <laughs> Nice. Okay, so enrage immediately mends and turn meter. Uh, enrage immediately mends and turn meter. Now AOE. They all got a bunch of mends, but it's not going to matter. <sighs> that was a twenty-point match. Okay. Now, because I purged from someone, sadly it was Freddy, who's not very convenient, but that means I can put him rage on him, uh, and chuck a taunt on freeze. Let me see what happens from here. The most important thing is to clear that from Arcus. But he counted and got himself a enrage immunity. Which means he's gonna issue challenge next turn. Unless I can get an assist from Freeze here. Which I just did. That was very lucky. Uh, and because Freddy was enraged and attacked him, he threw out a grenade, which slowed down Arcus even further. <sighs> so if I do this, he can retaliate, so it's not worth it. No, I'm just going to go after Freddy. Go after Arcus. Ah, damn it. 33k correct there on Batwoman from Sinestro, and that's going to be the end of the match. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, what I'm getting from these matches is that the synergy is there, but they don't have the speed, and the meta is so dominated by speed today that 
if you can't get the first turn or the first handful of turns and, and get your game rolling, there's not much you can do. Okay. He's alive. That's good. Enrage, turn meter for him. Then... I reckon slow down reverse flash. He goes after freeze, perfect. He's set to get the first turn, but he's enraged, he's gonna run right into him. That's not an issue. Uh, he's not death immune or anything, is he? No, he's just debuff to hell, I can one-shot him then. Now, all of this control from Freeze is coming from the fact that enraged enemies are attacking him. AoE. Lovely. Don't even care about that retaliation. And that's that. Three star. So... This is interesting. This is an interesting verdict, uh, because Reverse Flash being a physical striker means that he has a 47% crit chance at gear 11, so... What can I say, you know? It's like, it, it's pretty much 50-50 whether Joker's gonna get one shot by that move. If he doesn't, you can completely dominate the entire team with control, and you win. And if he does, then you're going to have to rely on some Constantine cheese if you want to be able to pull off the win, which even then you might not be able to. So after all that, what's the final verdict? Well, early game, you can't access most of these characters, and even if you could, it's very clear that it wouldn't be worth it. Mid-game, you know, gear 8 to 10, I think Constantine lead is definitely going to help you punch above your weight class if you can get your hands on him, and Sinestro works well enough with him because of the constant turn to gain and mends that I think they're worth using together and I definitely think that Joker and Freeze are worth chucking in there if you have them. But I think ultimately, if you want to succeed in PvP, you're going to have to throw in a Wally, or a Brainiac, or a Castaway, someone to give them that early turn. Now, outside of that, if you do want to use all four of them together, you're going to have to play Red Alerts, and you're going to have to play Smart, and you're going to have to pick a good first match so that they can get the ball rolling. So, overall, uh, would I recommend this team? Ah, no. I would recommend them because they're fun. I would recommend them if you have the ability to gear up characters, or if you already have tons of characters geared, and you're looking for a fun team to try in a couple matches when, you know, speed isn't going to be an issue, absolutely go for it. But I think, in terms of should you gear these characters specifically for this purpose, big fat no. Constantine, great in his own right. Joker, really solid in his own right. Sinestro and Freeze, a bit niche, but still fun. Uh, but... Overall, this team definitely isn't going to be making any miracles happen for you. I'd give them probably a 4 out of 10, as they are presented here, uh, for practicality in PvP. But note that if you, again, sub one of them out for a fast character, you can guarantee the rest of them will take a turn. I would say that could probably go way up to uh, an 8 or a 9. Obviously, you still do have problems against debuff immunity and enrage immunity, but being able to call assists from Sinestro and put a taunt on him with Constantine means you can take out some of those immunities and start enraging them and get the ball rolling, so you can definitely still play around it with this team. Um, so I'd say once you're there, you're going up to like an 8 or a 9 on the practicality scale, but overall, I would still have to give this team a solid 9 or a 10 on the fun scale. And ultimately, games are designed to be fun. So if you're looking for a fun team, I would recommend these guys. If you're looking for a team that's really going to help you, if you're, if you're a new to mid-game player, you can look elsewhere. Although, again, Constantine and Joker, solid in their own right. So I hope that helps. I hope you've enjoyed this content. Uh, DCL is a game that I enjoy a lot. I play it a lot. But I've never been sure on how to approach making content for it. So I've always kind of waited... Uh, and I hope that this is an interesting first video. I'm trying to break into the space a little differently. A lot of people are doing, you know, is X new character good? Are they worth gearing? And I'm trying to more look into kind of mechanics and 
how the game works and sort of explain some of the history of things, explain, you know, some of the lore behind characters and how it factors into their kits, and then ultimately, is this team worth using together? That's the, the kind of thing that I want to go for. So I hope you enjoy. If you have any kind of content that you would like to see, please let me know in the comments. I'm very open to feedback. This is very new for me. But otherwise, if you enjoyed it, feel free to let me know. Uh, you can like the video if you like, if that even does anything anymore, god knows. Uh, and of course, if you aren't subscribed and you want to see more of this content, please hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you're notified when I upload. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.